transaction. Now, the first thing that we need to understand is that every business transaction has at least two entities involved in it. One of the entities generating revenue for goods or services that they provide, the other entity generating an expense, which possibly could be a deduction for goods or services that they paid for. So in our case, we've got like a lawyer on the left-hand side. And the lawyer. You're a lawyer? Providing legal services let's say the small business on the right hand side is paying for those legal services so then the question is well how does the irs how do taxes fit into the situation what might the irs's concerns be if you were for example the irs from the irs perspective we have an income tax therefore the person that is generating revenue the person getting paid for the goods and services that they are doing the IRS is going to want to make sure that they report that income on the taxes so that they're going to have to pay taxes on it. The one that's paying for the goods and services, the IRS might be concerned that they overstate possibly the expense. Now, from a tax standpoint, who's the one that's got that's actually benefiting from a tax standpoint? You call this a tax return on this transaction, the one that's actually paying is the one that gets a tax benefit. The one that's getting paid, of course, is making money, generating revenue. That's good for them, but for taxes, remember everything is flipped on its head. It's actually bad for taxes because they're gonna have to report that as taxable income most likely and pay taxes on it. Taxes? I don't pay no damn taxes. The one that's paying gets to report it as an expense for taxes. Expenses are normally good, for, but for tax, I mean, normally bad, but for taxes, they're good. So the IRS actually has the leverage more on the person that is paying. So they might go to the person that is paying then and be able to say, hey, look, if you want that deduction on your taxes, Bro, my tax deductions are crying. What we want from you is to tell us who you paid. So see how this, you can see with the tax law and where the IRS starts to insert themselves where they have leverage on the payer, the one that might get a benefit from the deduction. So how might that look, of course? Well, then you'd say, well, if this if this person was employer of the employee, they might, and the IRS might actually kind of force this situation to happen. They're gonna say, hey, look, this lawyer is working exclusively for you and you're telling them exactly what to do or something like that. Therefore, we think that they are characterized as an employee, not a contractor. So starting now, I'm an employee. So you might not have a whole choice on that, but if they are an, an employee, then of course the the irs is, has like a lot of leverage on the person that's paying the employee they want you not only to report the income that you paid to the employee but they also want you to withhold that money and not ever even give it to the employee but instead give it directly to the government directly to the irs and of course they want you to report the w-2 income which shows the the gross pay as well as as the withholdings giving that form not only to the employee but also to the government remember that's the key point the government really is the one that wants the w-2 form so obviously from a irs standpoint they're going to frame it as though they're forcing the employer to be nice and give the employee the information that they need to file their taxes just because the government's trying to look out for you but obviously what really the, uh, the government wants is for the employer to do the job of being the tax collector and the one that's reporting the income and actually take the income and report it on their behalf. So that's where there's kind of the most leverage and that's our most normal form that we expect to see. That of course being the W-2 form. Now, what if there's a situation where the person on the left is a contractor and the person on, on the right is paying them as a contractor? Well, then there's less leverage, but you have a similar situation. And the choice as to whether someone is a contractor or an employee is is not totally freely up to these two individuals, right? You have to you have to see if you if you qualify as a contractor or an employee. But let's say that they're a contractor. And so now now the IRS would still have the leverage on the person on the right. They're saying, hey, if you, if you want to deduct that on your business uh, report on your Schedule C or whatever your your income tax then we still we won't make you actually take the money from the contractor before you pay them and pay them on our behalf with a withholding but we still want you to give us some kind of form 1099 so that we know who that you paid and when the person on the left 
then files their taxes if they don't record income, say on a Schedule C, that is at least equivalent to the 1099 reportings, then they will most certainly get some kind of, of letter saying from the IRS saying that they have underreported. So that's where the leverage is. That's the general idea. That's why the businesses basically uh, are doing what they do. That's where we get these major forms that we use to construct our taxes. The IRS is putting the leverage where they have the leverage on the payer side of the transaction to get those forms not only to you, but principally in their mind, of course, from the IRS's perspective to them so that they, so that they have the information. Now you can imagine a situation where the system doesn't work for the IRS to kind of be able to double check the income of a business. So for example, if this person on the right was not a business, but an individual that was hiring a lawyer for their personal purposes, then the IRS is not gonna have that same kind of leverage to force this individual to give the lawyer sole proprietor, for example, a 1099 in that case, because they're hiring the lawyer for personal purposes and therefore they wouldn't get any deduction for it. So the IRS wouldn't have any leverage. And many businesses that are like cash based, you have the same kind of problem. You've got the hair salons, you've got restaurants, you've got nail salons and th those types of businesses where the end person is gonna be the actual customer paying for personal goods and services then the IRS cannot go to the person that got their hair cut or something like that, for example, and say, hey, look, we want you to give us a 1099 for the person, the sole proprietor, the contractor that cuts your hair. Why? Because the IRS has no leverage in that situation because you don't get a deduction for getting your hair cut. And more recently, we see businesses that are gonna be in the gig economy where we have similar kind of situations where a platform is linking people together so that you have these small businesses that we couldn't have before. It's kind of like a new silk road where now you have people that want goods and services and people that can create a business providing the goods and services by having this silk road, this new technology connecting the two together, which are these basically uh, platforms that can connect people together. You can see how the IRS would be skeptical of that situation because once again, they have no place to say, I want someone to issue me the 1099. I want someone, as the IRS would be saying, to give me the withholdings in this transaction. And you can see what they're gonna try to possibly do in those kind of cases. They might try to make the platforms uh, hire the people that are using the platforms as employees instead of having letting them create their own business. Or they might go to the payment processors, the PayPals of the world and the credit card companies and force them to somehow issue uh, the 1099s. And this is like a big issue going forward that I think a lot of people aren't very well aware of because the income tax system used to be something that, that was checked and verified through more like random audits. So you, you were basically filling out your tax return and it would be similar to a situation legally as you driving on the freeway. The, the cop, the policeman could pull you over on the freeway for speeding, but that would probably only happen like one out of 20 times that you're speeding. But you know that if you get a ticket, it's gonna be quite a, a costly experience. Therefore you don't speed. That was the general concept with regards to the tax code as well. You file your own taxes, you get audited from time to time. If you get caught in an audit, not doing what you're supposed to do with filing the taxes, then uh, you get hit in the audit. Uh, 